Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Juan Carlos Brando, and today I'm going to be hosting this show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong and Associates. She is going to be talking to all of us today and uh, knowing that it's the beginning of this year, but soon is going to be the new um, moon year. I don't know what year is this going to be, but for sure Ms. Wong can tell us in a bit. Um, but the good thing about this year 2024 is that if you are trying to get a relief on your immigration case, it doesn't matter what country you are from, um, she will be able to help you in your immigration case. She has people that speak over 30 languages in the office and also uh, people that are very experienced working as paralegals, as legal assistants, and other 15 attorneys that are working with Ms. Wong uh, every single day going to court, uh, getting ready with the doctrines that we're going to follow in order to have the policies to work immigration cases or, or uh, certain immigration cases. So let's welcome the attorney Margaret W. Wong to the show today. Hello, Ms. Wong. How are you doing? I'm very, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for um, having us today. And well, I would like to start by uh, talking about people from different nationalities that have been in the United States for over 10 years, um, people that have been here for 20 years. What are the chances for them to get an immigration relief, no matter the country that, we're, the, that they are from? What are the chances and how would it work? See, uh, and I'm glad you asked that question because laws have really changed. The, the, it really started in 1964 with the Civil Rights Act and then 1965, the, the uh, Quota Act, saying that because before then, normally it's the white Eastern European or the Irish, but normally it's normally the white people. So by 1965, I'm lucky I came in 1969, so I'm one of those, like, uh, they said it out loud, outliers that I came at the right time. That's when a lot of Asians, the Chinese really came in after Kissinger and Nixon visited China in 1972 and 1978. So Fujiao, uh, Fujian, uh, uh, Wenzhou, those people, they really came like in the late uh, uh, 80s. And of course you have Tim Square in China. So that's a June 4th instant. That's June 4th. So these are, so historically, that's a, when the Chinese came to America. And then of course the, the civil war in the, in the, I shouldn't say civil war, Korea, you know, the Korean war, North and South Korea in 51 to 52. Philippines uh, is always an American ally. Uh, so you see a lot more Philippines in America. But the most Philippines in those days, they're very nationalist. They all go home. So, you, so now they want to come now. And their grandparents, sometimes or great grandparents, were citizens of America, but never filed. So I'm glad you asked about the past 10, 20 years, what happened in the future. So from the past, it's just like a stock market. So, and this morning I went to check up with my eye doctor and he reminded me, I didn't see him for 15 years. There's no tracking. See immigration, there was no tracking because through the years there was no immigration computer. So now immigration is starting to track, you know, how many Chinese came, how many uh, Filipinos came, how many Mexicans came, how many El Salvadorians came, and how many Venezuelans came. So now America really have those data now. So going forward, because anytime you get green cards residencia, you need the approval of Senate and Congress, for example, DACA. All those kids that got DACA, there was a time we're hoping they'll get green card residencia, but that requires the approval of both the Senate and the Congress and signature of the President of the United States. So it's not going to happen because right now with the with the Democratic uh, Party controlling one uh, house and then the, uh, the, the, the Republican Party controlling another house, 
It's just we can't pass any law. So what President Biden, that's why, you know, every show I remind our, our listeners to really try to get your friends to vote for President Biden. Trump already said he's going to build a citizen department to really investigate how people like us who became citizens did we lie on our green card application did we lie on our place of birth to get that citizen he's really even talking about rescinding citizen papers and i don't mean to be rude about this uh, but that's really wrong you know once you're a citizen you should not be investigated because that goes into another department, not Homeland Security. Homeland Security have jurisdiction of immigration, which means that we are non-citizens. I can go on and on about this, but what would happen in the future? President Biden on October 1st started a new law saying that five types of work permit now get five years. And that's very important because, for example, a green card application, now you're getting five years. So, for example, the green card takes like six years for approval because green card application residency is very slow. But at least you have that five years. You don't have every two years to go and extend or one year under Trump. Or they won't even give you a work permit because they deny the green card so fast. So. Um, I think residency is going to get harder and harder and harder, even though uh, for uh, cancellation of removal, even people when they're waiting for five years to get the residency, so that will get harder. But work permit, I think, may get a little bit easier. Nothing is easy, but work permit, I think that's why it's all in our mind. As I keep saying, we have three facilities, your mind and your brain, your heart and your love and your passion and your gut, you know, how you feel. As immigrants, I always believe in you have to take care of yourself. You are who you are. You can't depend on parents that stuff overseas anyway. You don't, I mean, the spouse, of course, is important to have the love of your life, but ultimately we are alone. So you have to listen to yourself. So to listen to yourself, I really want our foreign people to really not dream as big. I have clients who now that we got the work permits, now we got them five years. Now they say, oh, when am I going to get my residency? I'm like, oh, because residency, you have to win something. Even if your child is over 21, you cannot get residency because you may have a perm bar, you may have entered illegally. So I, I, Mr. Juan Carlos, I don't mean to be rude about your question, but the short answer is residencia. A green card is getting harder and harder. Citizenship, it may be easier, especially for people who have lied about the amnesty. Because we have a lot of Latino people, uh, uh, Middle Eastern people, Chinese people who came, but we have lied on our application. So that may be a little bit easier. But under Trump, those cases, even if you've got citizenship, they're looking at revoking them. That's my understanding, and I could be wrong. Um, that's my short answer to us. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And well, if you need more information, don't forget that you can call the phone number 216-279-3984 and talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on this field for over uh, 46 years, almost 47, Ms. Wong, now in February this year, is gonna be 47 years. Uh, and it's easy to say that, but it's been a lot of time. It's been a really long time. Uh, Robin says, you guys are very generous people. Thank you for everything you do for everyone. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Wong, the next question is, how much would it cost approximately approximately your honoraries and application for EB1 or EB? That's a very good question. In this case, show that you may have a PhD or master's, you may have some publications, you may be doing some research. I think if you uh, are from India, if I were you, I would go on uh, EB1A or EB1B. If you have a perm job and stuff like that, I would not go NIW because NIW is the EB2. If you want to do NIW, if there's a job offer, you might as well do perm, it's the same thing. But if you're from India and China, that's my recommendation. I don't think money, I think you need to look at the resume first and also not be humble in your resume, especially for EB1 cases. National interest waiver, which is NIW, is very different from EB1A and EB1B and EB1C. 
EB1C is intra-company transfer. So for example, if you work for a company in, in China now, and they transfer you to America on a proprietary knowledge and not on managerial, then you still need a perm for EB2, EB3, but for EB1C, if you have managerial and executive, you can do directly at EB, uh, I want 40 and concurrent if quota open. Right now, quota is closed, even for India, it's just horrible. But that's a very good question. I would like, we do free resume reviews. Uh, so if you can email, uh, if you go on our internet, uh, just on that information, email us your resume, but don't be too humble, all right? EB1 is if you're great in tennis, if you're great in soccer, write it down. If you are, we have clients who forgot to tell me and they are like in division one when they are in university and they are on full scholarship on sports. So I'm like, why did you tell me, you know, because uh, because we actually have been very successful on O visa on sports um, and division one, even division four, you know, if they're first, you don't have to be Olympic level. So write everything down. It's like you're a Renaissance man. We have done cases where we have clients who are PhD in Sanskrit uh, because we don't understand so Sanskrit is the Indian, like in Chinese, we have the same thing. Um, but Sanskrit is a very holy language of India, but they are, he's like a rent. I mean, he is so good at everything. He's a good engineer. I mean, he's the guy's awesome. I would want to give you one A case for him, it even though it took me some time and he's from India. So, um, so give us a resume. We do free resume review. Not only that, we have a I'm so proud of our team, and I'm glad you asked this question because this program normally is viewed by people who have no status in America. I presume you already have a status. If not, you couldn't qualify for EB1 or EB1B. Um, nowadays, they call it A and B. In the older days, we call them EB11, EB12, and National Interest Waiver. But uh, send us a resume. I'll look at it. But don't be too humble, all right? Tell me everything. If, even if you're a chef, you worked in a cruise ship, let me know. Because we do also O visa and EB one A for chef cases because it's difficult to do EB with three it take too long it's about three years if you're not from India China China takes five years oh you're a public accountant public accountant is difficult uh, for National River EB one uh, I don't know if you have a degree you may have a master's or PhD if it's only a bachelor's and you qualify as an accountant one of those CPA probably woke up but write it down. If your name is always in a newspaper, you're next to famous people, you know, stuff like that. But normally as an accountant, it's difficult to get national waiver. you be one A or one B. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your answer. And well, don't forget that the attorney Margaret W. Wong is available and she you, you can reach out to her only by uh, giving us a call to the phone number 216-279-3984. Also, if you want to have more information about us, just go to the website www.imwong.com and uh, you will see all the information on our website related to the attorney Margaret W. Wong and Associates. So uh, thank you so much for this question. Let's go ahead with the next one. And it says, hello, Mrs. Wong. Hello, Mr. Juan Carlos. Uh, thank you for this show. My question is, I lost my green card and would like to get a new card. Uh, you need to do an I-90. Uh, the fee schedule, I think, is, I don't know, five $600. Or the, so just go to USCIS.gov. You don't need a lawyer on there. You'll say I-9. The form is I-9. But if you go to USCIS.gov, it's an awesome website. And at the end of each page, they do ask, do you like it? Please push your like because we want them. The more encouragement the web people on USCIS, actually, I remember uh, the first person who is the head of the web development at USCIS, my good friend. So, and that's why he told me, Margaret, if you like it, tell us you like it. You know, so make sure you put yes, 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 uh, you like it. You can also um, subscribe to the public information, which I also do because I always want to see what's going on. Um, if you go to the USCIS.gov website, just put it, push in the form I-90, everything about I-90. The form is I-90. I presume you already have a 10-year green card. Just do the I-90. They're going to give you a 48 months receipt. I think you can even file an e-file. And you don't need a lawyer. You can travel overseas with your passport and your, and your receipt notice. In the olden days, you need to go get a stamp. Now you don't need a stamp. If you read the receipt notice, they tell you right out, you have 48 months to travel. You don't need a step. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, uh, for this answer. Yeah, it's bad. Um, is it recommended for people to to go around with their green card in the in the wallet? Uh, normally, what I like to do, and that's what I do, which is not too kosher. I like to just cut out a Xerox copy, put the front and back. Uh, for me, my green card was so important. It's like I just hate because knowing me, you know, especially I was living in New York for a while, you lose your wallet. And then I always like to put the original in my safe. I have a safe in my house. So um, I put Xerox on my drawer. On my, you know, nowadays it's very different, especially under Biden, under Obama. Even though uh, they deport, Obama was deported in chief. They say Trump deported more, which is not true. Obama actually deported more people than Trump. Um, but in my days, when we get a green card, they also, uh, then when you become a citizen, they actually have citizen ID, a very small one. So what we do is I like to cut a Xerox it, cut it out. But then uh, the law is you're not supposed to Xerox citizen papers or green card paper. Now, I still recommend I would copy it, put your original in the safe, put a copy in your drawer, put a copy with your spouse, your parents, put it everywhere as Xerox. So if you lose it, it's easy to do the I-90 because I have clients who call me, they lost it, they don't want to be a citizen now, they forgot the A number. You know, if you have a copy, it's easy. Just do the I-90, attach the um, a copy of the green card. And it's nice if you can attach a police certificate because people sell these green cards. Nowadays, it's hard because you have security now because it's homeland security. But for years, you can sell these green cards a lot, especially to Latino countries because like hundreds of thousands of people come through our southern border. They just show the green card. They don't in Canada. They don't even wipe into the machine now or these green cards are into the machine now. But still, I would keep copies everywhere if you don't mind. And also your citizen papers, even though at one time the law said you cannot Xerox it, now I would Xerox it and put it because I myself had lost my citizen papers. I was lucky. I didn't know I lost it. So, and I was lucky when I find out I was in my New York office. So I just ran to uh, New York immigration, which in those days give you a letter or they give you another certificate right there. Now they won't do it. They make you sign a new form. Things are getting more security orientated and stuff like that. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And yeah, uh, for me, in my case, I, I never carry my uh, work Papers. permit or yeah. work authorization or uh, social. my social. Yeah. I never carry them. I memorize the numbers. You do not have a good memory. That's right. And I know By the way, for those of you who don't know Mr. Juan Carlos, he remembers stuff. So we have been working together for years. I always watch him looking at me and I say, don't you need to write notes? Because I'm always scratching my notes and writing my chicken. The guy doesn't write. And he said, no problem. I remember. He remembers everything. And that used to drive me crazy. Or oh, I'll call him and say, remember like that conversation we had four months ago with this client and I lose my notes and he was like, da, 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 da. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's just, That's um, Mr. Juan Carlos. If, if I'm writing, if I'm writing, I'm not listening to you. And it's hard for me. I'm a man. And men right. cannot do two things together. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, so if I'm listening to you, I'm listening and I'm learning and I'm watching you, what you are doing and what you are saying. Uh, but if I write down, I forget what you are saying or I cannot listen what you are saying. Uh, so that's why I never take... Uh, don't uh, that much notes, but after I speak to you, maybe I make some notes. <laughs> when I'm talking, I'm I'm just listening to to the person. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Wong. Um, let's go ahead and get the next question. Abdul says, "Hi, I am a U.S. citizen. I filed the I-130 for my children. How many I A when you file the I-130, you don't need to attach the A64. When the so I presume the children are overseas, so you do the I-130, and the last third page you need to uh, say what country you want them to go in. And I hope you have birth certificates because in some of uh, like Afghanistan, there's no birth certificate. There's a lot of countries have no birth certificate. In fact, all their birthdays are January first. So I hope you have birth certificate. Once you go to American Embassy. If it's not an orphan country, but orphan country, you need to go. There was a time all Lebanese go to Syria, but of course now Lebanon, American embassy open. So um, at that time, you fill the X64. So you need two, one for each child. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Wong. 
Uh, we have a bunch of questions. Um, this next question says, is a, is a clinical psychologist degree a good option for uh, these visas? I think they are talking about EB1A, EB1B, and NIW. Okay, so let me look at your resume. EB1A and EB1B and NIW, they're very special visas. They're really people that's really smart, not just for scientists, but for AIDS researcher, cancer researcher, um, for J1 medical doctors, um, uh, for O1 people, uh, the clinical psychology depends on how much money. There are 10 requirements. If you go on the USCIS.gov, Again, you just have to give a question, please. Just say, how do I get my uh, extraordinary or, uh, or exceptional or scientist? It's all there. There's 10 requirements. You only need three out of 10. Um, but basically, it's really for people who they have either a lot of articles published or already made enough, a lot of money. Um, so I have a medical doctor that I just helped, and I won it like in 15 days. I mean, the guy is like, oof. He, he's a son of immigrants. I'm always proud of children of immigrants that went to Australia. They're from China. People who went to Australia from China, it, they are always smart. So I, I'm Chinese, so I know. So immediately, first thing I said, and he's so young, he's in the 30s, not married. So, oh my gosh, I wish I have a daughter. But um, the parents in turn out, as I suspect that they are professors, but they don't want to come because the parents could have got a green card and he would have. So he's on an E visa because he doesn't need H1B. Australians, they have an E visa. So um, the guy have like, I don't know, like 30, 40 articles published. Um, the guy is awesome. So I didn't need an O. So once he come to America on that E visa, it took me like 15 days, but these are amazing. Instead of making 200 some thousand, he was already making 400 some thousand. So high salary is one of those. Um, and I, you don't need to make hard. So for example, in your business, uh, normal pay is in the 60, 70,000. You're already making 250 and you are already a named professor. So it depends on Clinical psychologist uh, is not as good for NIW unless you write a lot of research articles because clinical psychologist is not a national interest waiver case. But don't worry about the terms. If you want to, we look at resumes for free. Send me a resume, but you really should not be humble. If you just a master's degree in psychology, you are working here as a clinical psychologist for not for profit. That won't work. Um, but it doesn't matter. I'll look at it for you. But EB1A and EB1B are really, I mean, I look at them and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, these people are in the 30s and the 40s. I did another case that I'm perpetually intrigued by her. She was very bossy for one thing. I'm like, oh, kid. She was only in the 20s. It turned out she was already talking on TED Talk a few times. I mean, actually quite a lot of times. She already did a lot of research. Uh, because she only have a student visa, she really couldn't go anywhere. She didn't have a work permit, but she's just awesome. So I won her, I think both a green card and an one. And if, if you're listening, I hope you know what you are, who you are. I was just totally blown away and she was bossy, but I, at the end I took her bossiness because she's like, she's a kid, but she's awesome. So there are awesome people out there or, or influencers. If you're always on the, you know, you have, I know, with the musicians who are like really awesome people, you know, they're like awesome. And they couldn't prove how many records they sold because they ran away from communist parties or socialist, I mean, countries. You know, we have um, Olympic level um, doctor who was actually at the team doctor, the head of the team doctor in the Olympic level game. I forgot what country he's from. He just left America, uh, left the country, don't even have a job. I mean, that's so I'm teaching him how to build a case. So these are people that I know they are, but you have to build your case. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, uh, for this answer. And don't forget, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret W. Wong has a lot of experience, very, very much experience. And I am learning every single day that I have the chance to talk to her. I wish I could talk uh, more to Ms. Wong because uh, when I was working there in Cleveland with her, uh, I was learning of how she is checking all of the files, uh, how she knows what paper she's looking for. I mean, uh, uh, 
if I go to the file and I I need to uh, read them once, twice, three times and see uh, the information I need, but she goes straight to the point that she's uh, looking for and she knows the answer already. So that's the kind of attorney you need to talk to because they know what you are going through and they know where you need to go to in order to get an immigration relief. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for sharing your 46, almost 47 years of experience working on this um, immigration field. Next question, Ms. Wong, uh, says, Venezuelan husband under refugee status in Europe has been, uh, which, which has been denied, married to an European citizen, would be possible for someone to request husband for a parole and what will the will be the case for? Yes, you can do the I-134. Uh, that's a parole, absolutely. That person could be an asylee grant, um, TPS, a green card citizen. Yeah, that's a good case. Okay. And the next one is, I think is going to be the last question for today. Uh, how will USCIS be uh, able to adjudicate 3 million applications according to them, which is still pending? And why does the backlog keep increasing? The backlog keep increasing because, this is just stupid. Immigration has always been backlogged in the past 50 years. Immigration was never caught up because they'll lose their jobs. This, another sad thing I think, and I know it's probably a conspiracy theory, is because immigration is the only department that is fee-based. What does that mean? That means the more money they make, the more power they have, and the more people they can hire. You know how even in a big company, uh, for example, I'm just giving you an example like PNG, right? Because the, the big boss always like to say, oh, when I go to a meeting with a network with all these CEOs, oh, we hire 100 people, oh, we have 1,000 people. So the more money you make, the more people you have. So as of 2002, Homeland Security started under Little Bush, on Chinese, we call him Little Bush, President Bush, and that's February. In March of 2003, the whole home, the whole immigration department went into Homeland Security and took our advice to divide immigration into three parts, CIS, ICE, and CBP. And you asked a very good question. Why is CIS so behind in their 3 million applications? That depend, So we have DACA cases that they cut off, but still we have old DACA that they never approve of DACA with criminal records instead of saying no, they're sitting there. So sometimes I wonder, are they, are they doing this? So, because now they're increasing our filing fee. Already it costs $1,225 for one green card application. If it's denied, you have to pay another $1,225. They're increasing to 45 I fee. In the olden days, it's like, I don't know, three, dollars $400. It's $800. Now it's 1000 Now it's increasing to, I don't know, $2,500. Premium processing fee used to be 1000 Now they're increasing $2,500, $3,500. EB-5 fee is like thousands because EB-5 is really for the rich people, is the investment visa. So fees are increasing, but the speed is like I, I pay for driver's license, right? So now they, they say, oh, you don't qualify for driver's license, but they don't give your money back. So that's why it's not fair. So now worse is that they, they took in your money, they took in your filing, and a year later they say, oh, you don't qualify. And then you, so now a lot of times it's better to get a rejection. Rejection means that I cannot accept your filing and your money. At least you get your money back. Sometimes it runs to at least 10,000. You have, a, because South American people, we have a lot of children, right? So if I have five kids, I have one husband, one wife, five children, they're all over the age of 12 and 14, which means that each green card is 1225. If you want to do premium processing on I-140, that's another like $1,000, $2,000. So the filing fee itself is more than uh, $10,000. And if I made a mistake, not only won't they get a work permit for that 10000 it's not a mistake. It's sometimes you take risk to file it to see if they'll be approved, right? They take your money a year later. They don't give you a work permit. They don't give you parole. Now they deny the case. You lose that money, not, not to say like the legal fee they pay us, the, the hard work they have made. And these are after tax dollars. 
they pay, they work, they pay tax and these are so it is immigration is getting more and more for the middle class and the upper middle class. They're not for the poor people. So on the other hand, America is nice because our salary is increasing because President Biden now is really into making prevailing wage to, to fair play. Even Cleveland, it used to be our minimum wage is seven to eight dollars. Now there's a movement to increase our minimum wage to fifteen, sixteen dollars. So um so I can go on and on about societal pressure, the three million application, the filing fee. But you're right. I mean, it's like they make more and more money from these fees, but they're they're not. They're hiring more and more people, but still, work permit itself is taking four to nine months. How could people make the money to pay the government if they cannot work? It's just. But you're right. I'm really glad you asked this question, Miss Emily. And you should write a letter to the President of the United States and Mr. Mallorca, who's the head of DHS. And maybe ask them. And our ombudsman is awesome. Right, our ombudsman a letter. I mean, why your fee is increasing, your fee base, but your processing time is is not is not reducing. That's my question to to them. If I were you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Do we have time for one more question? Yes, I do. Okay, last question for today. Hello, is any visa or something for business owners? Yes, uh, there is. Um, right now, because the stoppage of 245i after after April 30th of 2001 and then 911 came in, right now people are just desperate on people who have education, who owns businesses, because there's, aside from E2 visa from Korea, from Singapore, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, Canadians, Mexican have E2s, free trade. There's really no other visas. Yes. So you need to look at growth of your business. What's your business plan? Um, what's your vision of coming in America? And look at what country you're from. There are a lot of countries now that have e visas, a treaty status, and then you can come on the E1, E2. Some countries have only E1, substantial business. Some countries have E2, E2, E1. O visa is another way to go. Uh, P1, more for the scientists and the sports people and the music people. So it depends on what kind of business you are in. Um, so uh, property managers is one way if you like to own real estate, um, you know, stuff like that. Don't give up if you're a business owner. It used to be hard. It's still hard, but you need just to be creative on your thinking. As I said, there's three things, your mind, your gut, and your heart. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Our time is up for today. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week uh, when we get a chance to... Uh, talk in English and in Spanish on Wednesday at 9 30. Uh, we just got another question, but I don't know if you want to answer it now. I you could, no problem. Okay. Will USCIS invite me for an interview if I file for a T visa? A T visa does not require interview. Uh, lately, they also have interview waivers on the green card. But don't worry about interview, because if they want to interview, go for the interview. Don't worry. Go with your lawyer. Be brave. You'll be fine. They're not going to pick us up, even though we are undocumented. If you're documented, you don't need a TV visa. Of course, we're undocumented. So don't worry. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Okay, now it's time to go and get lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, and see you uh, next Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yes. for everybody who has joined us today, don't forget that the attorney Margaret Domi Wong is just at one call distance. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret Domi Wong with over 46 years of experience working in the immigration field. See you next time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.